Hi guys, so I was a little bit bored today and I thought I would actually do this video after all because I was planning on doing it initially but then I thought it doesn't make a whole lot of sense to compare a business device with a mainstream device but since this would be for me the one to go for and still a viable alternative to this one despite the differences I decided to do it after all. So this is the Dell Latitude 14 5450 against the MacBook Retina Pro 13. Why I'm going to actually compare these two, you will notice over the course of the video because in G+, I told you I'm really thinking about selling my MacBook Pro and get this one instead, but I had to just be a little bit more realistic. I would lose too much money because I paid 1300 for this one and I would get maybe eight, 900 after one year and it's still in perfect condition, so it would be just too much money wasted. This one here in the highest spec version costs also at about 1300 but their difference is this one has the i5. It's the lowest one model with 25, uh, 256 GB of SSD and 8 GB of RAM. This one for 1300 would have the i7, newest Broadwell 5500U, 8 GB of RAM. But the good thing here is you can upgrade it. There is one stick, but you can install two. Go to 16 and you could even go for two sticks with 16 gigabytes to a total of 32 where we are here limited at 16. But the good thing here is, and that surprised me a lot, sadly I didn't get that version, there is an 830M Nvidia graphics card optional available and for the i7 the 830M which is really nice because this would actually enhance video rendering for me a lot and that's why I was thinking about a lot but let's quickly check what we actually got here in terms of ports and devices itself here we have the latitude as you can see here it I, I, in my opinion ju just looks beautiful with the slightly rubberized soft touch coated magnesium it feels very premium it does pick up a little of, bit of fingerprints but they are quickly wiped away no problems here but it just feels so super sturdy same as the hard plastic bag the good thing about the hard plastic bag is it doesn't really get warm which the aluminum can get the only small thing here are the hard plastic feet because it will slip a little bit on the table same as the macbook does because it is also quite hard feet so i'm usually used to rubber feet but that's it but let's check the good things here we have first of all a port for a docking station this makes it already but since it is a business device it makes also a lot of sense here we have the Kensington lock combined headphone jack ports for the vents here we have an sc card reader which isn't usually the thing here here we have the bottom front facing stereo speakers also quite nice thing here is the led strip for power storage access battery for when it's charging and wi-fi and on the right hand side we have the full size sd card slot the whole sd card sinks in and usb 3.0 with power share you could think now this doesn't have a lot of ports yeah but that's far from all because here we have the really interesting part gigabit ethernet vga usb 3.0 one usb 3.0 again full size hdmi and the port for the charging so in total you get three usbs and this makes it very versatile and at first i thought that the ports at the back don't make a lot of sense but if you use this a lot as a desktop replacement which is totally capable for then it's nice to have the ports on the back and still have one on the side if you decide to need one and also the one for the headphone so this makes all the sense in the world actually just real quick on the macbook i guess you notice magsafe here two us two thunderbolts usb 3.0 headphone jack nothing but a really nice cutout to open it here we have sd card reader not the whole sd card fits in but yeah still here we have full size hdmi and another usb so only two usb instead of three and you, you just have more ports and more options here but since it is made for the business market it makes sense so keep this in mind these aren't really to be compared to each other but for me it did make sense so one thing I like on a Dell device, I can actually open it with one hand. It is possible. Usually the hinge is just too stiff, but in this case, I'm super happy that it worked. Really happy about that. But there still could be a cutout to make it a little bit easier to open like it is here on the MacBook. Before I'm going to talk about the displays, let's check the keyboards. And we have high quality keyboards on both sides. But as you can maybe hear, 
you have this slightly clicky feel on the MacBook. I can type on it really fast and really comfortable, but this clicky sound over time got me a little bit annoyed. Here on the other case, as you can hear, super quiet, nicely dampened. You have more key travel, you have a nice layout. Here it is QWERTY instead of QWERTS. So I had to get a bit used to, mostly because of the smaller enter button. But the typing experience on this one was just brilliant. And mostly due to the slightly more key travel, the slightly more dampened feel and the just quiet the typing experience, I actually prefer this one. And the only keyboard that would maybe be better would be the one on the ThinkPad series, but this was a really close second one. And this one would still be a close third one if you aren't annoyed as much by the clicky sounds. As for the touchpads, everyone knows how, at least I hope, everyone knows how amazing Dell, uh, Apple touchpads are. And this one is no better. You have multi-finger gestures. You have all the really good stuff, really customizable. And with a, a tool like Better Touch Tool, you have even more options. Also, perfect amount of friction, nice clicky sounds. This is, this is pretty much the perfect touchpad. I haven't tried the force touch feedback yet, because I don't have this version, but like it is, it already is perfect. Here we have two things. We have first of all the track point with the three additional buttons. So you have actually four buttons here. You have two for left click and two for right click with this third one, if you hold it down to be able to scroll. Also, you get options for, of course, two finger swipes for scrolling and so on, but also for three finger and four finger gestures in the software. The only smaller drawback is you can only disable and enable those gestures, but not really customize them. Maybe add one app that you want to open with it, but that's pretty much it. So you're way more limited than on the Apple MacBook. The amount of friction here is a little bit too much to be perfectly precise as you are here, but therefore it feels very solid, it's very precise, gets recognized very well. So. Just real quick, in terms of ports, of course, the Dell wins. In terms of build quality, of course, this one with 1.96 kilograms is a lot heavier than the one here with 1.57. Uh, yeah, that one is 1.57, 1.96 here. But since this, is, since this is 14 inches and doesn't actually feel that heavy, I'm okay with the heaviness. Of course, it is also a little bit thicker. So it's not the smallest one, but using them both on daily basis, I didn't really that much notice a difference. So I was fine with both of them. Keyboard, yeah, I know, just get back to the design. I would actually give this one the slight preference because of the plastic back, the absolutely nice finish here. I really love this finish. The stealth black looks just amazing. There's nothing wrong at all with the MacBook design, but I don't know, this one just impressed me a lot. The keyboard is better on the Dell and the trackpad is better on the Apple. But of course, that's always a little bit of a personal preference. One thing that has to be mentioned in the display part, you can go more than 180 degrees back, but the Apple here at maximum does still offer you more than a satisfying angle. Let's check the displays. And I have to say one thing first, on the video, this one looks actually way worse than it actually is. Of course, as you can see here, the one on the Apple looks a lot brighter and it really is brighter. I would say at least 10, 15, maybe even 20%, but it's way more critical here to view on the video. Also in terms of the, the, the calibration, because this one looks extremely cold. It's, it is a little bit on the colder side, but definitely not as extreme as this one is. This one is almost perfect, slightly on the yellow side. The more I use this, the more I notice that this one actually is warm. In terms of sharpness, of course, this one wins because we have a only 1080p matte display here on the Dell and the 2560 by 1414 on the Apple, which is glossy. This is, I have to say, on the Dell, the first matte display that I actually like. Usually I don't like matte displays, but I think business user will definitely like it a lot. The whites, as I already said, slightly colder here, slightly warmer here, but both do a great job in daily use. The blacks is where the Dell wins. It can get deeper. There is a little bit of backlight bleed here, but nothing that I usually notice in normal use, so I'm okay with that. And one thing I wanted to mention, there is a little bit where the display gets dimmer to the sides. Also not a big thing, but it can be obvious. Here is the biggest difference, I would say. This, the, the Apple seems a lot more vivid, vibrant, 
and more colorful, just more punchy than this one. This one seems a little bit more natural and accurate. The colors though aren't really that accurate because skin tones often look a little bit wrong, just a little bit too yellowy and so on. So this one is definitely more precise, but I had no problems here at all with this one. And since this is made for the business market, it doesn't really have to be that accurate after all. And both did a well job. This is the first the uh, matte panel i would actually say i would be a i would be happy to use this on a daily basis as well it's definitely a big difference between this but not like it's a negative thing so let me get and check the sound not that it's really important on a business device but still let's check it right now Okay, let's check the same on the Apple with 100%. Okay, just one more real quick. Okay, I'm not really sure how well it will translate over my lavalier mic, but it should be good. Okay, so not to drag this too far. The Apple can get about 20% louder. We have bottom facing on the Dell, which is a little bit odd, especially if you use it on your laps. It will block out a lot of volume and block out a lot of treble. So not the perfect placement. Once on a desk, it reflects quite nice and can be loud enough, I would say, but just about enough because like I said, 80% of this, I would wish for at least 10% more to have a little bit more reserves. Generally, it was okay. It has a little bit of bass, not really much and quite a slightly weaker mids and the highs are slightly muffled, but the overall sound is actually still for a business device more than good. Therefore, we have no distortions at all. Something I, I have a lot on the Apple and a few other devices that have like aluminum chassis. So it is definitely okay. For a business device more than fine and even for a mainstream device, this sound would still be totally okay. The Apple sounds clearer, has a little bit more bass, sounds a little bit lightweight, not may, may, maybe dot rich. In comparison, this sounded more towards the lower tones. But I definitely prefer this one, but this still does a great job. Just real quick for the performance, I won't get really that much into it because this would take a lot of time because this is also the, already the older version since it's the late 2014 model. But we have on the Dell available an i5 and i7. There are even a few i3 versions of it. I wouldn't recommend go for i5 or i7. Eight gigabytes of RAM, as I said, but you can go up to 32. And there is the option, at least on the highest version, it is already there. You have the option for a discrete Intel, no, Nvidia graphics card with the 840M. This makes it very capable and faster in many things than the Apple because you have now the CUDA cores and rendering, for example, in Adobe Premiere should be a lot faster. That's why I actually tended to get this one. Here we have the Intel Iris graphics, which would be faster compared than if you use QuickSync, if you are only limited to QuickSync. But the i5, they both in normal use behave pretty much similar. There is not really a that much of a difference. The SSD here on the Apple is way faster. We have like 700 read speeds and I think 600 write speeds. Here is a little bit of an odd thing because I only have the 128 gigabyte version which has 400 reads but only 130 write speeds. So this is a little bit of a bad chip management. If you get the 256 gigabyte SSD storage solution, this should be gone. And then you, had, you should at least expect about 300 write speeds. So in performance, if you use the fully spec'd out version here, due to the Intel, uh, do the Nvidia graphics, sorry for that, it will be faster, especially for gaming and rendering with the CUDA cores. If you use the full spec'd out version here, it will be faster, maybe a little bit in a few other things, but generally, you, you know the differences. This is not meant for gaming also, since it's a Mac, it just doesn't allow that much gaming also. If you check the battery life, there are a few things to mention here. And 
sorry that you have not really a lot to watch at and have to mostly listen but I couldn't use another camera because I usually use this for the camcorder so for the battery life real quick this the Dell charges in two hours and 40 as it came for me out of the box and the Apple charges in one oh, in two hours now you could say 2040 is a lot longer, but you have a lot of great options here on the Dell. If you go into the BIOS, you can change it from adaptive to steady over to quick charge. And there is also a version that is meant for if you use the device mostly on the charger. What's the difference here? If you go to the quick charge, which actually should have been the default setting, which it wasn't in my case for some reason, then it will charge in one hour and 50 and that is very impressive this is by far the fastest charging windows laptop i've used so far pretty much on same but keep in mind this will take up more stress on the battery so if you want to use the device for longer periods of time maybe use adaptive or maybe use steady mode and if you use it on the charger you even have that option and i think there was also one option where you could actually customize the charging to your liking yourself that is really nice as for the battery life I would expect pretty much the same. This one, according to many benchmarks and so, should get 8 hours. But for me, in normal reality use, I get to about 5 to 6 hours. It can co change quite dramatically if I use a different browser than Safari, then I'm at 4 hours and less maybe. But yeah, the battery life on the Dell is pretty similar. I get to about 6 hours, sometimes only 5, 5 and a half with Internet Explorer. If I would use Chrome, I'm pretty sure I would get less as well. But I would say in my normal use, the battery life was very, very similar. In terms of heat, both are good, but the, the MacBook on the bottom due to aluminum can get quite warm. And if you type a lot on your laps, like I tend to do, then it will get annoying. Here, the great thing is you have plastic, which makes it so much more comfortable. You have the heat dissipating here, but it didn't get warm here ever. Plastic did a great job of not making it warm. It did get a little bit, at least, let's say, noticeable, a little bit warm here at this place. So when you type, you had like slightly warmer hands, but not that you felt like you would have to sweat or so. One thing that I liked a lot more about the typing experience, just real quick, you have this nice, not sharp edge. One thing I don't like so much is the sharp edge here where I scratch a lot against it. So temps are good on both. Noise here. I always said the MacBook here is my reference because in normal use it is always, pretty much always silent 100%. And even under heavier use it can pretty much stay very, very silent. When the fans though kick in full power it can get a little bit loud, not really extremely loud, but it barely ever happens, even on the rendering videos. The Dell is the most impressive device in terms of noise I've had so far in the Windows segment. In normal use, even under slightly more medium use, also always silent. Let's say 95%, every few hours it maybe bursts a little bit of fans. That's pretty much it. Under heavier load, if the fans finally decide to kick in, you will hear them but still very, very subtle. And sometimes I didn't even notice once not properly what, um, listening to it that the fans were actually on. So if both are spinning at full speed, the MacBook is actually louder. It isn't often on this high level. This one gets a little bit easier to the high level, but therefore still, no matter what you do, is very pleasant to use. The system doesn't make sense to compare because it's OS X versus Windows, so you know the, the pros and cons. You have definitely more customization options for the trackpad here on the, on the Mac. And you have a few little limitations here in terms of the trackpad, but at least you have some extra options. I don't know why they don't do this on the mainstream devices, those multi-finger gestures. I really like them, but they, are, they could have more options. I've seen it on Toshiba devices already. So. I don't know how useful this comparison was because, like I said, business versus mainstream. But, like I said on G+, I was thinking about switching to this one because I really like the keyboard so much and the build quality and the whole design just appeals to me. And with the option for the 830, 840M, I could also render maybe a bit faster. But, like I said, it doesn't make a lot of sense to sell this one for me. If I wouldn't have either one, then I would struggle even more because I think then I would maybe switch back to Windows and use this as my primary device 
but since this isn't the case let me know what you think what did you think about the dell of course there will be more coverage in my full review later this week but this is just for it right now okay until next time bye